This video is looking at how we deal with uncertainties related to graphs. So by the end of this, you need to understand how it is that we can calculate the percentage uncertainty in a gradient and how we can calculate the percentage uncertainty in a y-intercept uh, and how we can actually use those in the conjunction with the equation y equals mx plus c. Now, this particular data you should recognise because you will have used it in class um, and you will have tried to analyse it. So I'm going to go through the same process I asked you to do so that you understand exactly what I was expecting. So we have this equation, d is equal to v squared over 2a plus vt. This equation relates to uh, stopping distance. So in essence, this section of the equation here, v squared over 2a, relates to the breaking distance. Uh, v here is the is actually the initial velocity in both cases. Uh, and t is the thinking distance. Sorry, thinking time. So we have the vt is the thinking distance. Um, so just to explain very briefly where this comes from, breaking distance, sorry, think, stopping distance is breaking distance plus thinking distance. The thinking distance uh, just depends upon the initial velocity, which in this case is v, and the thinking time, okay? Uh, and the breaking distance is equal to... Um, Uh, will be, sorry, the breaking distance will be equal to, um, will come about from this equation. So I'm just going to show you where this comes from in full. Um, okay, so this is our SUVAT equation, v squared equals u squared plus 2as. S in this case is our breaking distance. We know that our final speed is zero, so that means that u squared minus 2as is going to be uh, equal to each other because we know that v is 0. So I can say u squared is equal to 2as. And then I can rearrange that so I get u squared over 2a is equal to my breaking distance. So you can see that's where this expression has come from. So that's just to give a little bit of context so you understand this equation. So... Um, what we're interested in is being able to plot a graph um, in the format of y equals mx plus c. So what we're going to do is, because we've got v in two places here, right, um, and we've got the squared quantity, uh, we want it to be a straight line graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide everything by v. So I get d and v to the minus 1, so that's the same as d divided by v, will be equal to v divided by 2a, but rather than divided by 2a, I'm just going to write 1 over 2a, so v times 1 over 2a, and I'll explain why in a second, plus vt divided by v, which will just be t. Now this equation now form is sits into the equation for this straight line of graph, so this is going to be my y, we're going to put that on the y-axis, my v, that is my x-axis, and v is always multiplied by my gradient, so my gradient is equal to 2a, and t is my y-intercept, okay? So my graph that I'm going to have is going to have dv, uh, d, v to the minus 1 on the y-axis, v on the x-axis. My gradient is going to be, when I calculate it, equal to 1 over 2a. And my y-intercept, that's going to be my thinking time, okay? Now, we almost have all the data we need for the graph, but we do need this final point. So the way we work out d, v to the minus 1, that is literally d divided by v. So nice and straightforward, we're going to do d, which is 13, um, divided by 10, which you should be able to do in your head, as 1.3. But we also want the absolute uncertainty as well here. So since we've done d divided by v, I need the percentage uncertainty in each. I need to add it together to give me my percentage uncertainty in dv. So we have 0.5 divided by 13 times 100. So my percentage uncertainty in d is 3.84. And uh, my percentage uncertainty in v, you can probably work out in your head, right? uh, because it's 1 divided by 10. So we're going to do 1 divided by 10, which is obviously 0 0.1 times 100 is going to give us 10%. So 
So we end up with 13.484% uh, as our percentage uncertainty in DV. So 13.8%. Now what I need to work out my absolute uncertainty is I need to work out what 13.8% of 1.3 is. So I divide that by 100, turn it into a decimal, times it by 1.3, and we get 0.18 as our absolute uncertainty. Now just a little point to notice here, the absolute uncertainty as you can see decrease the whole way down. The percentage uncertainty is always going to be the same for the whole thing, but because the value of D divided by V is increasing, the absolute uncertainty is being reduced. Okay, so just be aware of that. Um, <coughs> um, so now we want to plot this into the form of a graph. So now we've got all of our data. This is my graph, okay, that I'm going to use. So I've already plotted my d against v, uh, my v slash meters uh, seconds to the minus one. And I plotted the points that we've got. The additional one is 1.3. So I'm going to add that. So 10, 1.3 would be there, okay? Now, what I want to be able to do then is work out the gradient. So what I do, first of all, is I do my line of best fit is going to look like that okay that's my line of best fit so I want to work out the gradient for that so I choose two points on my line so I'm going to choose this point here and it's always good you need to make the points that you choose be at least over half the width of the length of the line so I'm going to go to uh, just to there, just to give you a nice point to measure from. And so what I then want is I need to know how much has the x-axis changed by and how much has my y-axis changed by. And then I can read that off. So my change in my x-axis, okay, that in this particular case has gone from 12.5 uh, up to, uh, that would be 32.5, uh, uh, so that would be 33, so it's 33.5. So the change in my x-axis is 35.5, so 33.5 minus 12.5, so it's 21, and I do the same for here, so uh, from that point that is going to be uh, 0.45, sorry 1.45, there, and that goes up to um, 2.85, so again the difference between those is what I need, so 2.85 minus 1.5. And that gives me 1.4 as my change in my y-axis. So to then work out my gradient M for my line of best fit, I have to do uh, uh, 1.4, change in y, divided by change in x, divided by 21. And so I get a gradient equal to 0 0.06. So that is the gradient for my best fit line. Now to work out the percentage uncertainty in my gradient, what I need to then do is do my line of worst fit. Okay. Now one way of doing this would be to draw on error bars for all of my absolute uncertainties up and down on this line. Now I'm not going to do that to save time, but that would be what I could then do is I could then do my line of worst fit within the parameters of that. Another way of doing your line of worst fit is to, to draw it in terms of what's the worst situation you could get away with. Um, now quite often in your exam, the line of worst fit will be drawn for you, so you won't have to concern yourself with it. So just for this example, I'm going to draw my line of worst fit. And you can see the points that I've been given here are pretty spot on. But if I, I was to draw the uncertainty, there would be some 
increase and decrease above this line. So I'm going to use this red line as my line of worst fit, just for as an example. So what I need to do is work out my gradient for my line of worst fit. So I'm going to go from uh, this point here. Uh, in fact, I'll go from this point here. Right. Uh, and I'm going to go to this point because it will make it nice and easy. So I'm just going to circle those two points. Those are the two points I'm going to use. So I'm going from 10 to 30. So my change in... So this is my gradient, my M, in my worst fit. That was for my best fit. So uh, my X is, as I've already said, 20. Uh, and I'm going from there to there. So my change in Y. So uh, it's probably about... Um, 1.1, 1. Well, I'm going to go with that point there being 1. Point. one point one seven. okay, uh, and this point here, 2.9, 2.8, uh, I'm going to go with 2.7, okay. So, uh, 2.7 minus 1.17, so I'll get 1.53. So, 1.53 divided by 20 gives me 0 0.0765. So, that is my gradient for my worst fit line. So, now what I want to do, the equation that I have to use, is for my percentage uncertainty, in my work in my gradient I have to do my best fit line minus my worst fit line as a modulus so 0 0.0765 minus 0 0.06 remember it doesn't matter which way around I do it it must be a positive number that's what we mean by modulus then I divide that by my best fit line and then I times that by 100 so for mine Minus 0.6 divide by 0. Sorry to not show you this. 0. 0.06 times 100, and I get my percentage uncertainty in my gradient as 27.5 percent. So that's my percentage uncertainty in my gradient. Now my y-intercept, I can't. Uh, I could. Um, track this line all the way back and, and, and try and try and, and do that but uh, this I haven't started at zero here so I wouldn't get an accurate reading uh, for clearly by reading off the graph so I want to calculate it so if we're calculating a y-intercept what we do is uh, we have to use the equation y equals mx plus c so I rearrange that to give me c and I get c is y minus mx so all I need to do is choose a point and what I need is I want my best and I also want my worst y-intercept. So the one from my best fit line and the one from my... So I choose a y-point. I'm just going to choose uh, this point here on my best fit line. So it is set, my x is 17.5. My y, which is easy to read off, is 1.8. So I've got 1.8 minus my gradient of my best fit line, which is 0 0.06, multiplied by my x value, which is 17.5. Uh, that will give me my y-intercept for my best fit line, uh, I'm, which I'll calculate now. So 1.8 minus 0 0.06 times 17.5. So I've got a y-intercept of 0 0.75. So that's my y-intercept for my best fit line. And then my y-intercept for my worst line, uh, I'm going to choose this point here, because, it's again, the numbers are easy. So my y-value is 2.5. Uh, my x-value is uh, 27.5. And my y-intercept gradient we calculated as 0.0765. So I'm going to work that out. So 2.5 
uh, sorry for making this a little bit messy, let's try and straighten up. Uh, so 2.5 minus 0 0.0765 times 27.5. And I get my y set for my worst line as 0 0.396. Uh, right? So you can see that uh, there is a, there's clearly a difference between them. So I can work out the percentage uncertainty in my y-intercept by doing the same process that I did here. So the percentage uncertainty in my y-intercept is I do the difference between my two. So, and it's a modulus. Divided by my best y-intercept times 100. Not point seven five minus not point three nine six divided by not point seven five times a hundred gives me a percentage uncertainty my y intercept of forty seven point two percent. Okay, so let's just go back for a second. Now that I've got my percentage uncertainty in my gradient and my percentage uncertainty in my y intercept back to the equation that we started with. Um, so we talked about for this um, this equation, and my gradient is equal to one over two a. So I'm just going to put here m is equal to one over two a, and my time, my y-intercept, is equal to my thinking time. Okay, so my y-intercept is equal to t. So I've worked out now. Uh, my gradient for my best fit line. So I'm actually going to work out what A is. So my gradient for my best fit line um, was apologies. So my gradient for my best fit line uh, was um, 0 0.06. So 0 0.06 times 2 um, and it'll be equal to 1 over a, so I'm going to do the reciprocal of that. So a will be um, 0.16 times 2, the reciprocal. So my a value is 8.3. That's what I worked out my acceleration to be from my best fit gradient. Now I can use, I know the percentage of uncertainty for my gradient is 27.5%. So I need to work out what 27.5% 0.5%, you can see that this, this is just a number. So the percentage uncertainty in my gradient is the same as my percentage uncertainty in A, because obviously divided by 2 doesn't have one. So um, the percentage uncertainty in A is 27.5%, so I need 27.5% of, 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 of 8.3. So I do 27.5 uh, divided by 100. Uh, that puts that into a decimal, which I can then times by 8.3, and I get my absolute uncertainty in A, plus or minus 2.28 meters seconds to the minus 2. So I've actually got my A value for my gradient and my absolute uncertainty by working out my percentage uncertainty in my gradient, uh, and then working out an absolute uncertainty from that. And lastly, we know that my y-intercept is t, so I know my y, I know t. T from my y-intercept for my best line is 0.75 plus or minus. My percentage uncertainty in my y-intercept is 47.2%. So I need 47.2% of 0.75. So divide by 100 times 0.75. And I get plus or minus 0.354 seconds. So I have my thinking time and my absolute uncertainty and my acceleration and my absolute uncertainty in that, which we have done by working out the percentage uncertainty in my gradient and the percentage uncertainty in my y-intercept. And we've looked, also looked at equations of a straight line and how we calculate uh, y-intercepts as opposed to just reading them off graphs. So there is lots of skills compounded there that you need to be able to follow and you need to be able to go through. If you can't follow the skills in this, you need to rewatch it, do it again, uh, and make sure that you can, uh, because each of these skills can be tested separately or in conjunction in your exam.